enjoyed it. Oh, Daddy, let's go through again. No, 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 you'll make yourself feel. Besides, you've been around three times already. We'll have our teas now. The usual place, The usual yes? place. <laughs> Do you still say I'm going home tomorrow? Yes, Daddy, we must. Well, it's a pity. That girl flu pulled you down a lot, you know. Yes, dear, but it's done me good being here. It's a set tea today. Blimey. <laughs> now then, who's going to be mother? You, Daddy. Well, that'll be a surprise. <laughs> now then, what do nice people have at tea time? Tea. And what do sensible people put in it? <laughs> Daddy, you spoil it. You're worth spoiling. <laughs> Uh, spoon, Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, dear. It takes a big man to let an old woman teach him good manners. Who are you calling old? I wouldn't change you for 50 younger ones. It's been such a wonderful year. And coming back here again has reminded me of so much. You've got a lot of memories here, haven't you? It's been our second honeymoon, Teddy Bear. Our second honeymoon. Safe and sound. That's Philip's car, isn't it? Uh, yes, dear. What do you want here? Hello, Emmy. Looking better, Mum, aren't you? Mm, just a little tired. I'm tired but... after the journey, Emmy. I should take her indoors and look after her. <laughs> I'll uh, put the car away, Molly. Oh, yes. Thank you, dear. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bear. Oh, Philip. And there's your chair waiting for you, Mum. So just you sit back and rest yourself, and I'll bring you a nice cup of tea. All right. Toddle, Emmy. Toddle. <laughs> Good to be home again. Well, Philip, you got my letter? Yes, I did. I, uh, with all respect, Mrs. Bear, I don't feel happy about it. When I instruct my lawyer, Philip, it's because I want him to carry out my wishes. Why must you make another will? The one you made just after your marriage seems more than fair to me. Your husband gets this house and your money goes back where it belongs. Back to the family. Back to my sister, you mean? Who else? She's your only relative. I haven't seen Dora for 20 years. She's a wealthy woman now. Her husband left her an enormous fortune. No, this little girl of influenza worried me. If anything happened, and I'm a good bit older than Teddy, I must know that he gets all my money. He's entitled to it. I feel bound to remind you, Mrs. Bear, that your money came from a family business. Don't you think it should stay in the family? Teddy's my family. All the family I've got. Mrs. Bear, has Edward been pressing you to make this will? Indeed he hasn't. Teddy doesn't even know about the first will. I never told him. You're always very unfair to Teddy, Philip. I've always thought your marriage to Edward was a mistake. Oh. Hello, Philip. Good afternoon, Edward. Look. Got a surprise for you. Oh, pieces of my patchwork quilt, you clever boy. <coughs> Brought you something else, too. How are you, Molly, now you're home? Better? Yes, but still very languid, Teddy dear. No energy. Influenza pulls down the constitution. Makes you feel very depressed. I know how to cure my wife's depression, Philip. Ah, the princess of the teacups. Where shall I put it, sir? Put it there, Amy. Are you staying to tea? 
Thank you, but uh, if you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. Now, don't forget, Philip. I want it here tomorrow morning, ready to sign. Yes, Mrs. Bear. I can see you've made your mind up. I'll be up in the morning. Don't bother to show me out, Edward. I can see you're tired. Well, what's the matter with him? You ought to get up, dear, when visitors go. Oh, I can't stick him. You know, it's just as rude to notice. Um, what uh, brought Philip here anyway? Hmm? Nosy Parkering, was he? That's a good match, Teddy. You have an eye for colour, haven't you, dear? Mm. Why did he come? I asked him to call, dear. I must make a will, Teddy. A will, Molly? Oh, I'm so pleased with my pieces. Clever Teddy Bear. Always thinking of little ways to make me happy, aren't you, dear? Nothing's ever too much trouble. Well, I'll look after Molly today, and Molly looks after me tomorrow. Isn't it nice to have them home again? The house did seem so empty without Mr. and Mrs. Bear. There you are, Simon. Go along. Drink it up. I won't have you making a will, Money. I told you when we got married, there was no need. If you outlive me, you have what I've got. If I outlive you, I have what you've got. That's the law. It's Dora. She's no right to anything. She's a rich, interfering busybody. I told Philip how I felt about Dora. Listen, Molly, next of kin, that's what you've got to be. It's simple. Leave it like that, next of kin. Got to take care of Dora. Keep the money in the family. Said it over and over again. Anyway, my ticker's wonky. I've told you before. You'll be here long after I'm dead and gone. Then you can leave it to a cat's home. Home. I got my way, Teddy. I made Philip see I meant what I said. Must make a will. It's... It's essential. Listen, Molly. Promise me you won't make a will. I'll, I'll phone young Philip and tell him it's off. Eh? Too late. I can't, Teddy. It's done. Must look after my family, Teddy Bear. All the family I've got. Bringing it for me to sign tomorrow. Sorry about that, Molly. I'm sorry you did it. Really, I am. Coffee's in the drawing room, Mum. Coffee, Teddy. That's right, dear. I do like good manners, and you never forget yours, do you? Well, I've got a good teacher. Don't forget yourself, dear. Keep up with Molly. I'll watch it. Teddy, get out the magic carpet. Let's go for a ride. Keep Molly awake. All right, Molly. Where do you want to go to tonight, then, eh? Japan. Page... Sixteen. Japan for the blossoms, eh? Lovely blossoms in Japan. Lovely blossoms. <laughs> Would you like to marry a gay sugar, Teddy? I'm satisfied. Well, now, I'll tell you where we go tonight. Bermuda. Look, there. Yeah. Bermuda. Lovely. Come on, Molly. Drink up. Mm. Don't disappoint the boy.
Finished your library book, Molly? Huh? Library book. Didn't like it. Silly. But you'll need another one tonight, won't you? Don't let's leave Bermuda. It's sunny there. You can go to Bermuda another night, Molly. Don't want to drag you up and down that hill again. It's only half past seven now. The library isn't closed till eight o'clock. That's a quarter of an hour there. Ten minutes to choose your book. A quarter of an hour home. Home. Oh. Mrs. Bear's going to have a nice little snooze. Ah, that's good, sir. That's what she needs. Yes, if Mrs. Bear wants you, she'll ring her bell, so uh, don't you disturb her. I'll cut your tail off. Oh, I won't disturb her, sir. I should be upstairs finishing the linen cupboard. Just going down to the library, Amy. Shan't be above an hour. Mrs. Bear all right? Yes, sir. I won't go in unless I hear her bell. Molly, are you cold, dear? Cold? Yes, I'm cold, dear. Cold. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. Listen, you're tired too, aren't you? Hmm? Tired and cold. Let's put on the fire, eh? Come on. Have a nice little warm. So you were the first to find her. What did you see, Miss Evans? Madam, lying on the floor where she'd fallen. She'd managed to turn on the fire, but it wasn't lit. We found the matches spilt all over the fireplace, didn't we, sir? Thank you, Miss Evans. Now, you've heard Dr. Walker's evidence, and also his suggestion that the reason why Mrs. Bear fell... Because she was drunk, sir. Well, she wasn't. She may have liked her glass, but no more than that, sir. I was the last to see her alive, sir. She sat so peaceful, nodding in her chair. Do you know of any reason why 
Mrs. Bear should take her own life? No, sir. Madam was younger than me. She wouldn't have wanted to die, sir. She was always so happy since she married Mr. Bear, sir. Thank you, Miss Evans. <laughs> Come on, Amy. Come on. I'm sure that all of us here out of the opinion that Mr. Bear has nothing with which to reproach himself. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the evidence given by Dr. Walker and also Miss F. You spoke very well, Emmy. Remembered everything. Yes, Mr. Bear went through it with me first, didn't you, sir? He didn't want me to be nervous, and I wasn't. Yes, I... Everybody was so kind. Come along, Amy, into the car. What do you intend to do now, Edward? I thought of going abroad. Rome, Paris, or Nice. Interesting to see the world. I expect you think it's ended very satisfactorily. Highly satisfactory. Very fair verdict, accidental death. Of course, you know, Edward, it's a curious thing about a coroner's verdict. What? Well, it's, uh, it isn't final. What does that mean? Well, if further information comes to light, the case can be reopened. Hello, Philip. I don't expect to see you again. I was rather worried about our talk this morning, so I thought I'd better clarify the position. Oh, well, that's all right. We all have our little quarrels. But any time I need a lawyer, I'll remember you. Oh, thank you, Edward. But it's your own position I mean. I think I ought to warn you that if you start travelling seriously, you may find funds a bit tight. What do you mean? Well, you see, it isn't as if you can touch the money yet. Toddle, Emmy. Toddle. Don't go, Emmy. You're mentioned in the will, too. Will? Molly didn't make a will. Sit down, Emmy. Oh, go on, sit down. Hear what he said. It's perfectly simple, really. Mrs. Bear left this house to Edward, but all her money is left in trust to her sister, Mrs. McIntosh. You'll get it when she dies. And there's 200 pounds for you, Emmy. 200 pounds? When was it dated? Mrs. Bear made it just after you were married, before you fuddled her mind with too much drink. You'll get yourself had up for defamation of character if you're not careful. Accusing me without proof. Of course, there's a bungalow. We put that in your name, didn't we? A bungalow wouldn't shack. Go on, toddle, Emmy, toddle. Go and think about your good news. Isn't every day you become an heiress? Molly wanted to put me right, didn't she? She wanted to scratch that will and make a new one. That's right, Edward. Oh, I'm sorry, Molly. You poor old girl. You make me sick. I'll see you out, Philip. Don't bother. Let's get up when the visitors go. Philip. Yeah? Uh, that's Sister Dora. Where exactly does she live? Kingston, Jamaica. Too far, Edward. Well, Amy? Now you got your 200 pounds, where are you going to go? Go, yes, sir. Hmm. When I let the house and move out. Move out, sir? What's going to happen to me? Oh, I don't know, Amy. See, I can't afford to go on living here. Mrs. Bear left me very badly off. 
Oh, sir. You can stay here till you get another job. Another job, sir? Oh, dear, I couldn't look for another place. Not now, sir. I'm too old. I wonder who'd have you, Amy. You're getting very slow. Yes. Still, I get through the work just the same, sir. Yeah, but I'm a poor man, Amy. You'll have to go home. Holmes, this is my home, sir. But I can't afford servants. But you could afford me, sir. I don't want any wages. Wait a minute. I wonder if Mrs. Bear meant that 200 pounds for wages. Oh, yes, perhaps she did, sir. She may have thought it'd be easier than you paying me every week. Amy, I believe you've hit it. Of course, if I thought she meant that, you could stay. Did she ever mention it to you? Well, I don't really remember, sir. Perhaps she did. She did? Well, I'll take your word for it, Amy. You can stay. Oh, thank you, sir. It's not for me to say, sir, but why don't you go away for a bit? Well, I'm going to find what I'm looking for here. That's a dead sir. All right, Polly. You know what that means, don't you? Yes, sir. Polly, put the kettle on, and you shall have a cup of tea the minute I can get it to boil, sir. Well, I slipped up that time, Monty. You wanted to look after me. I shall have to think again. One thing's certain, though. Somebody's got to pay my passage. <laughs> No, I'm waiting. place to ourselves today. Seem to? I had to come in out of the sun. My skin's sensitive. Yeah, me too. It gives me a headache. Pigmentation, my doctor says it's due to. <laughs> Seen you here before, but uh, today I thought you'd be swimming or something. <laughs> Not likely. Salt water doesn't agree with my skin. As a matter of fact, I don't know why I came here. I hate the seaside. But I was bored and couldn't think of anything else to do. That brought me here too. Really? Mm. Why not come over and be sociable? We can hate it together. All right. After all, we almost know each other already, don't we? See you every morning at breakfast. Mm, I've noticed you too. Funny we haven't got talking before. I generally make friends pretty easy. Well, I didn't like to intrude, you know, and uh, I noticed your wedding ring. Oh, that. One of the spoils of war, my lad. You don't want to take any notice of that. Oh. As a matter of fact, I'm a widow. Oh, really? Poor Albert buried him six months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the matter with him? He was dead. <laughs> Never mind me. I'm always very humorous. No, it wasn't that. It's just that uh, I had a recent bereavement myself. Oh, really? Yeah. My wife. Very sudden. Oh, well. Never mind. Best not to think about it. Uh, would you care to dance? Oh, all right. How 
long are you staying down here, Mr. Uh... Oh, uh, Bear. Edward Bear. I don't really know. I can uh, please myself. Oh, nice. Well, I can do the same, come to that. They do you quite well at that little place, don't they? Yes, possible. A few days. Oh, my fingers itch sometimes when I'm sitting in that bar. Have you been in that line yourself, then? Started off as working barmaid, ended up marrying the governor and darn well running the place. Hmm? Of course, I'm in private life now. Why did you give it up? Well, it was a big place, and you need a man in a house that size. For the look of the thing, you know? Anyway, I'd had enough. I bet you got quite a good price for a business like that. Not bad. No need to go on working. Why should I spoil my hands if I can keep them lily white, eh? <laughs> I know a better place than this for dancing. But a lady can't very well go by herself. You're fond of dancing? Hmm. Depends who I'm dancing with. All right. We'll find a better place. I promise you. few days. Have you? Mm. Not looking forward to next week or on my own, so. Aren't you going to Paris then? Oh, I don't know. Can't seem to make up my mind. I should find somewhere to settle down. I'm sick of living in hotels. Say, do you mind if we sit down? My feet are killing me. I'm at a bit of a loose end myself. My late wife was uh, a great loss to me. Well, I can't say the same for my poor Albert. Still, mustn't grumble. He cut up very nicely. <laughs> mm. Just play around with love. Leave me alone, I won't be true. You should have known I'm not for you. Though I'm your heart's desire, haven't you learned? Children who play with fire always get burned. Find some oh, I never offer you a cigarette. Oh, I don't smoke. I've got good white teeth. I want to keep them that way. Mm. Whatever you do, leave me alone. Yes, whatever you do, leave me alone. Shall we dance? Mrs. Jeffries, you're um, a woman of the world. I've got a problem on my mind. I'd uh, like to ask your advice. What's her name? There's no her in this room. Uh, let's go out and talk. Well, what is it? Well, it's like this, Mrs. Jeffries. I've got enough money to live on, more than enough. But I'm bored, and I'm lonely. Well, I could give you some advice, but you might not like it. If the truth hurts, I can take it. Look around, trundle up the aisle again. Get married. Mm. You're a fine one to give advice, Mrs. Jeffries. Why don't you take a leaf out of your own book? Well, to be perfectly honest, there have been several occasions when I very nearly have. And then I found it was the money bags they were after, and not the old bag herself. <laughs> no. no, I wouldn't entertain matrimony again. 
not unless I could find someone to put down pound for pound. Of course, I had thought of uh, letting my place and uh, going abroad. Mm, that's a good idea. Let it furnish, then you can do what you like. No, it's easier said than done, though. You see, I wouldn't like a, well, a stranger clawing over my late wife's belongings. Not unless I like the look of her, of course. Do you like the look of me? Yes. You might make a very good tenant. Of course, I'd um, have to look the property over first, see if I liked it. Oh, of course. Get to know the place. That could be arranged. I never commit myself, Mr. Bear. Not until both parties have signed on the dotted line. Find someone new, make her your own. But whatever you do, leave me alone. Yes, whatever you do, leave me Welcome to Stoneley. Ah, oh, you've done quite well for yourself, Mr. Bear. Yeah, I mustn't grumble. Still, you could do with a lick of paint. Well, it keeps the rain out. Oh, hello, Mr. Bear. I didn't expect you back till oh, tomorrow. Don't fuss, Emmy. You don't said... fuss. You... This is the Emmy I've told you about. Oh, hello, Emmy. It's big. How many bedrooms you got? Uh, six and then a couple of attics where she roosts. I brought this lady to see the house. Can we have a cup of tea? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Well, then go on, go on, show the lady where to put her coat. Yes, uh, this way, lady. See you later. What are you doing? I came to see Emmy, Edward. I wanted to talk to her. Emmy? While I'm away, what about, Philip? It takes a long time to clear up an estate, Edward. There are still outstanding problems. I think the answers to some of them are to be found in this house. And what's Emmy got to do with it? Well, Emmy's a very simple soul. She's easily imposed upon. But someday she's going to say something. Something that will lead to the truth. The truth? What are you trying to prove, Philip? Yes, you're flushed with success now. You're full of confidence. But remember, Edward, I'm watching you all the time. The jury said it was accidental death. Oh, you seem to know what I'm talking about. Ah. Oh. Uh, this is my lawyer, Mr. Mortimer, Mrs. Jeffries. How do you do? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Jeffries? Uh, Mrs. Jeffries and I were guests in the same hotel. I just brought her up here to uh, have a look round the house. Oh, you've decided to let her then? Well, I may do. Well, Phil, you'll be wanting to get back to the office, won't you? So we won't hold you any longer. Got to tell you, sir, Mr. Mortimer's here. Yes, I, I'm just going, Emmy. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, Emmy, I hear you opened a bank account and that you're drawing checks. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Bear showed me how to do it. What do you expect her to do with her money? Keep it in a stocking under her bed? But Mrs. Bear meant that money for your rainy day, Emmy. When Emmy needs an umbrella, she's got me. Very nice, too. I wish I had a brolly to keep the wet off me. <laughs> All right, Emmy. Mr. Mortimer's read his little sermon. Go on, toddle. <laughs> Quite the old-fashioned kid, isn't she? <laughs> Ooh! Uh, comfy. If you do decide to take this house, Mrs. Jeffries, make Edward get rid of that gas fire. Why? I haven't been here since the day of the funeral, Edward. Every time I look at that mat, I seem to see Mrs. Bear lying there. What, here? You mustn't get morbid, Philip. I'm the one that's got to live here with these ghosts. What was she doing here? She had an accident. With a gas fire. I thought you said it was flu. I said nothing of the sort. I said she had flu just before. Oh, was that it? So we're sitting in the morgue, really. <laughs> oh, excuse my joke. I always see the funny side. Fancy. I hope I haven't said anything to upset you, Mrs. Jeffries. Oh, no. My Albert dropped dead in the saloon bar one night. I was drawing beer the next. 
Business has to go on, you know. Oh, well, I, I'm glad I haven't put you against the house, Mrs. Jeffries. I wouldn't like to say anything to spoil any plans Edward has made. Philip's a great one for bringing the truth out into the open. He's trying to warn you that I'm the town's biggest fortune hunter. Is he? Why is he doing that? I suppose it's about time you knew, Mrs. Jeffries. I married a rich woman older than myself. And what's more, we managed to confound all the local skeptics by being very happy and contented. Very nice, too. Never mind, Philip. I can always trust you to keep an eye on my affairs. You're so straightforward. Yes, I'm always looking out for you, Edward. Well, see, I don't trip up. That's what I pay you for. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Jeffries. Bye-bye. I'm in the telephone book, if you should ever need me. Ta, oh, remember that. <sighs> oh, Phil, uh, by the way, I've got, uh, got some news for you. You're not my lawyer any longer. <laughs> no, but I'm still money's. Poor old Phil. He's got to work for every bob he's got. I expect he finds it demoralizing. Oh, allow me. Tea lady. Oh, good. Emmy, where's the little girl's room? Big pad. Uh, left along the first landing, second door. Thanks. Simple, isn't she? <clears throat> well, Emmy, you know, that lady being here today has brought a lot back to me. I expect it has, sir. Were you surprised when you saw her? Well, sitting in Madam's chair, I was. Hmm. Mrs. Jeffries is a widow, Amy. Oh. Such a sad life she's had with her husband, too. She thinks every man's a monster. Mm, she ought to see you and the mistress, sir. Oh, but that was the perfect union, Emmy. I wish Mrs. Jeffries could know about that. It might help her. Well. I think I'll go and pick her a rose. A rose? Ah, that's nice, sir. Yeah. You keep the place very well, Emmy. Even the room's not in use. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Tell me, um, why is one of the doors locked? Oh, that was their room, ma'am. Mr. Bear locked it up and it's never been used since. Oh, I see. This place is too big for one man. I expect it was different when Mrs. Bear was alive, more lively. Oh, yes. He did everything for her. No woman ever had a better husband, and she was always the first to say so. Didn't matter how much he spent. Lucky to have the money to spend. Oh, the money all came from the shop. Oh? Tell me about the shop, Emmy. Well, it had been in the family, you see, and it grew and grew. And then Mr. Bear sold it for her after they got married. Got it for such a lot of money. Oh, they did have an evening. It was so cheerful. <laughs> I had a glass of port. How much do they have to be cheerful about, Emmy? Thousands and thousands of pounds. Quite a little gold mine, they called it. Well, Emmy, I can see you've been having your tongue run away with you. And I bet you forgot to tell Mrs. Jeffrey where I've been. Dear. Well, you'll lose your head one of these days. You really will. Go on, Emmy, toddle, toddle. She's been saying some very nice things about you, Mr. Bear. Oh, well, she's, she's very loyal. I uh, picked you a rose. Oh. Thanks. Uh, will you be mother? All right. Now then, sugar? No, thanks. I'm on a diet. Oh, really? Uh... Why don't you... Uh... Stay at the ball down the town for a bit. Milk? Hmm? Oh, thanks. After all, your time's your own, isn't it? Hmm, that's true. And then if you uh, like the place, you could uh, move up here. On what terms, Mr. Bear? Any terms you like. Pound for pound, Mr. Bear? Pound for pound, Mrs. Jeffries. All right. Good. Oh, I've... Uh, Got something to put in this tea. Ooh. What's the matter? Oh, I felt suddenly cold. Somebody walking over my grave, perhaps. <laughs> you needn't worry about that, Mrs. Jeffries. They won't be burying you for a long time yet. Not if you're a good girl. <laughs> 
you know my wife, don't you? Uh, Mrs. Chatsworth? And of course you know me. <laughs> what about a toast, Charlie? Come on, Charlie boy. Come on, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. You're the best man. Come on, Charlie. Silence for Charlie man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come here to talk. As Anthony said to Cleopatra when he went into her tent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'll cut it short. All of us here today are friends of Teddy Bear. And we all shared in his sorrow when the late Mrs. Bear so suddenly and so sadly passed on. And so it's a real pleasure to see him here amongst us. A happy man once more. Uh, by his side, that charming lady is introduced into our company and whom we welcome as his wife. So, friends, it's a real pleasure to give you Mr. and Mrs. Edward Bear. Long may they thrive and prosper. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Bear. Very nice, Charlie. <laughs> this really is champagne. Who paid for it, Eddie? Not you, I suppose. Well, no, I think I'm right in saying that the, uh, the bride or the bride's parents paid for the wedding breakfast. Pound for pound, Mr. Bear. <laughs> pound for pound. I believe you've met your match, Teddy. This stuff always makes me sick. Can I have a beer? Come on, here, I'll get you one. You certainly know how to land them, Teddy. What bait do you use? Charm, Charlie. Just charm. Your charm and my money. Don't forget it was me that financed that little trip of yours to the seaside. Don't worry, I'll get your money back. I mean to. You've landed your fish now, Teddy. But don't forget it was your Uncle Charlie that supplied the chips. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you made friends with the vacuum. Didn't blow up after all, eh? No, ma'am. By the way, Emmy. Isn't it about time I paid you some wages? I've been here a month now. Oh, no, I've got my money in the bank. Madam left me 200 pounds. Yes, but that's nothing to do with me or Mr. Bear. That's separate. Oh, no, Mr. Bear explained. Madam left me my wages in a lump sum. Oh, Emmy, there's one board every minute. Never mind, I'll see you're not the loser. Come on, I want you to open up this door. Oh, Mr. Bear, go raving mad. It's only opened up once a week for me to dust. From now on, Emmy, it isn't only what Mr. Bear wants. Come on, open up. Why, well, anyone would think it was Bluebeard's chamber. Blimey, it is. Oh, it hasn't been used since Madam passed on. Mr. Bear liked it kept locked up. All the same, it's silly to keep it shut up. Mr. Bear won't like it, Mum. That's Madam the day she married Mr. Bear. Oh, she had a kind face. Tell me, Emmy, how did she come to marry Mr. Bear? Oh, well, you see, Mr. Bear was a clerk in Mr. Man's estate agency. He come up here when Madam thought of selling the business. Took to him at once, Madam did. Oh, he can certainly turn on the charm when he wants to. What's in here? Oh, well, we'll have to get rid of this lot. No sense in giving the mots a feast. What are you doing in here? Get out. Get out, both of you. This is Molly's room. I told you never to unlock this door, didn't I? I told you. Stop it, Ed. It wasn't Emmy's fault, it was mine. Anyway, why shouldn't the room be unlocked? Get out. Get out, I said. This is Molly's room. I don't want anyone in here. What? Well, carry on. All right, Ed, I'm sorry. I didn't know it meant that much to you. Go on, get out. Never let me see you in that room again. I told you. You know, if he'd had any more wives, I'd have had to sleep in the bathroom. I didn't expect to see you. Well, I was passing. I thought I'd wait for you. What have they done to you today? Oh, the usual. I was going blonde, and then I thought it might make me look common. <laughs> Here, shove over. I want to drive. I'm sorry I blew up this morning in Monty's room, but I, uh, I've been sleeping all lately. I get a sort of shut-in feeling. It makes me irritable. What you getting at, Ed? Well, I don't want to disturb you again, so I, I think I'll move into Molly's room. Stay there for a night or two. Now, listen, Ed. 
I don't know what your arrangements were with Monty, but I didn't marry you for companionship. Okay, Mrs. Bear. I bought your present. Ooh, crystallized fruits, lovely. I seem to remember you saying you liked them. Uh, got all the tricks, haven't you, Ed? Still, they're nice tricks. Uh, I can't be cross with you for long. Mm. Well, I'm glad you came round. Don't like the salts. You know he did the lovely view, Ed. Mrs. Bell, I'm gonna pick you a little nosegay. Keep you happy. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. Come on, come give us a hand. Is it safe? Of course it's safe. Charlie Mann's onto a good thing, Frida. Who for? Charlie Mann? Oh, funny. No, a piece of land behind the cathedral. Chap ready to go for 3,000, but I can get it for two. Be worth twice that amount in three years. Why? Gonna build a cinema on it. Who said? John's got a cousin in the surveyor's department. Well, you know, your own business best, Ed, but I'd say your money was safer in the bank. We could do it in your name, if you like. Thought you'd like to hold the counters. What sort of a fool do you take me for, Ed? A very wise woman, Mrs. Bear, who knows when she's onto a good thing. You're right there. I back my horses when they're past the post. This one's better. It's back home in the stable now. Not till that cinema's built, it isn't. And if you're so sure, why don't you write out your own check? Anyway, I've asked Charlie Mann to come up and see you tonight. Hope you're not going to make a fool of me. Well, then you better put him off. I'm not going to put him off, Mrs. Bear. And I'm not going to play, Ed. You'll do as I say, Mrs. Bear. You hit me, Ed, and I'll hit you back. Tit for tat, pound for pound, remember? I'm not making a present of 2,000 quid to you or Charlie Mann or anybody else. My money's my own. It stays that way. Get that into your head once and for all. Oh, Ed. <laughs> if you could only see your face. <laughs> we help. That's very kind of you. Ed, see what you can do. All right. My engine stalled and I can't get it started again. That's all right. Uh, my name's Bear. As my wife, we uh, live just there. I'm Charlotte Young. Feel such a nuisance. No, not at all. I uh, like thinking about with cars. You up in the car. I'll take you up the house while he's fixing it. Oh, thank you. And they're making you quite comfortable at the Crown, Miss Young? Yes, there is so far. Bed's clean. Quite, thank you. Hot water hot? I think so. Looks a good house, the crown. You can always tell, you know, by the brass outside and the curtains. Oh, it sounds as if Ed's got your car going. Car's perfect. Carberry got choked up, that's all. Oh, is that it? It's always something small. Now, don't go, don't go. Sit down. Have a drink. Uh, Sherry? Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Young's looking for a house around here, Ed. I told her you used to be in the estate business. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. I'd say she dropped into the right place. Got some addresses at Manor Mead. Oh, Manor Mead. That's a very posh district. Um, what sort of price are you thinking of? 12,000, something like that. Oh. Of course, they're, um, they're converting a lot of these big houses into flats. Oh, I don't want it for flats. Oh, you're going to live in it? Yes, I'm going to start a school, an equestrian school. Eh? Horses. Oh. <laughs> I know a bit about horses. Yes. Quite the little jockey, aren't we, Ed? I ran a riding school for some years, but I wasn't my own boss. Then, when my father died, I found myself, well, independent. Very nice. So I gave him my notice and went round the world. <laughs> Very nice, too. That's what I'd like to do. I hope you don't think I'm taking a liberty, Miss Young, but uh, what agent did you go to? Russell and Portland. Oh, they're dead from the neck up, aren't they? That's right. Very old-fashioned. You ought to see my friend Charlie Mann, Miss Young. 
Oh, should I? Mm. Mm. Why don't you let Ed take you in to see Charlie, Miss Young? Oh, I couldn't bother Miss Young. Oh, there's no bother. My time's my own. <laughs> I'm retired. Uh, made his pile young. Be doing him a kindness, really. Are you sure? Miss Young's staying at the Crown, Ed. All right, 10.30 tomorrow morning. Take you up to Charlie Man and pick up the lists. Oh, thank you very much. And for the drink, too. Sorry I have to go so soon. I brought your car under the side. It's easier for you. You must come again now. You know your way. After you, Miss Young. Oh, my bag. Oh, Miss Young's bag, Ed. All right. There you are. There's your bag, Miss Young. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye. Bear. Not for long, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> nice woman. Hmm. Pity she came too late. What? You heard. You gonna see Charlie this afternoon, Mrs. Bear, about that piece of land? I wouldn't entertain it. Look, you're afraid of that, Mrs. Bear. Listen, Ed. A clever bird doesn't foul its own nest. I don't mind helping you pluck the one that's just fallen into your lap, but my feathers are in tight, and if anybody pulls them, I yell. You wouldn't have liked this one, Molly. She's crude. It's a lovely house, but it's hopelessly wrong for me. Yes, it's too big for you, Charlotte. What's the matter with you today, Edward? Something wrong? Well, I'm afraid we've looked at our last house together. Oh, Edward, why? It's Mrs. Bear. She's beginning to get jealous of you, Charlotte. Well, I haven't noticed any change in her manner. No, no, you wouldn't. But she's a very neurotic woman altogether. She, um... She keeps on threatening to commit suicide. I have to be very careful. But she seems such a practical person. Oh, I know you'd think so, but she talks about it so many times that sometimes I wish she would jump out a window. Oh, Edward. Oh, I didn't mean that, of course, but I've got to talk to someone. I mean, you can see my position. My first wife dies in a fearful accident, and my second commits suicide. Lovely. What a dreadful situation for both of you. Yes, I know. I can't leave her on her own now that I know what's in her mind. And anyone there to keep an eye on her. I'm sorry she feels this way about me. Oh, it needn't worry you, Charlotte. Well, I was just going to ask her if she'd put me up for a few days. Stay with us, you mean? Yes, the hotel can't keep my room next week, but, oh, it doesn't matter now. Up, safe and sound. Thank you, Edward. You've been most kind. All right. Charlotte. You know, I've been thinking. I don't see why I shouldn't come stay with us. I mean, after all, the house is big enough. It'd be a good thing for Mrs. Bear, really. Let her see there's nothing in her little fancies. Oh, do you really think so? Well, we can ask her. No, Edward, I'd rather not. Now, look here, Charlotte, I'm still bossing my own home. Amy! Is he bare back from the dressmakers yet? No, sir. She did say you were picking her up, sir. I never said any such thing. All right, Amy. You see what I mean? Every time I take you out, she thinks of a new story. Charlotte, every time you come into this room, you go to the fireplace and you look straight at the fire. Oh, I'm sure I don't. Every blessed time. Look at you now. Why? Because someone's told you about Molly. Well, I won't pretend I haven't heard gossip up at the hotel. Very dangerous. 
Gossip. What exactly have you been hearing? They say you taught her to drink. Why? So she could turn on the gas, collapse before she could light it. Very clever crime, that. Have to have brains to think that one out. The way you say it, Edward, you would. No one could ever prove that you did it. You know, if it wasn't disgusting, it would be laughable. I'm surprised at you, Charlotte, listening to things like that. Well, people know I come here. We've been seen together. Edward, they even ask me about the gas fire and whether it's still here. Frida got rid of that. I suppose it fascinates them, the fire, the room, and everything. Why exactly are they interested? Well, I imagine it's the idea of your going on living here in this room where your first wife died. And my second pours the tea. They don't understand me, Charlotte. But you do. Money's dead, I know. But I've got a lot of very happy memories of her. This is Monty's chair. That one wanted to chuck it out, but I said no. I come down in the dark sometimes, watch it. Imagine her sitting there, talking to me. Is she cross with you, Edward? No, no, she thinks I ought to have waited a bit longer. Mourned her a bit. But Monty understood me. She knew I was born to have color in my life. This is uh, my magic carpet. Picture postcard. Mm. Been all around the world on these postcards, Molly and I. Wasn't her wish that I'd get stuck with an album. You'd do anything to get on that magic carpet, wouldn't you, Edward? Would I, Charlotte? It's a wonderful thing. Fly away and leave everything behind. There's room for a passenger on this carpet. I'd thought of that. Ed! Ed! Where have you been? There have I been standing for hours on the corner in the heat and the dust. My feet are killing me. Ah, well, I don't have to ask what you've been doing, and I know who you've been with. Morning, Miss Young. Found your stable yet? Uh, we did see a place, but Edward said it was too expensive. Well, I'm glad he's being careful with somebody's money. Charlotte was saying she's uh, getting fed up staying in hotels and being on her own all the time. Oh? Uh? Yes, I wish I could find rooms with the family. Just until I get settled on a house, you know. It's a good idea, Freddy. Here, we... Ed, take this fish to Ed. Yeah, I'm going suggest... Out. You were saying, Miss Young? But if I could find rooms in a house with some nice people, I'd pay very well. Oh, I'm sure you would. There must be some houses in the town with very nice people in them. Oh, I'd be very little trouble. You see, I've been so lonely since I went out of harness. Well, Miss Young, you better decide on one of your fancy houses and get your harness on again. Your friend's just going, Ed. Oh, not staying to lunch? <laughs> There's plenty of halibut. If she tells me in future, Charlie Mann's going to show her the properties himself. Oh, well, I know where to find you, Charlotte, if I feel like morning coffee. Hey, lunch early at the Crown, Miss Young. I know you won't want to miss yours. Your bag. This way, Miss Young. Oh, Mrs. Bear, it's I would... It's been nice knowing you, Miss Young, but even the best of friends must part. Good morning. Emmy? Emmy, how did Mr. Bear tell you to cook that fish? He said grill it. Fry it. Now then, young Ed. All right, don't blame me. I didn't ask her to fancy me. Well, if she does, she wants her brains examined. Drop her, Ed. You've been talked about enough in this town. I don't want to drop her till she's bought that piece of land by the cathedral. Well, what's in it for you if she does, Ed? Charlie will look after me. Well, I'll tell you what we do. We split the spending money. You put down your check, I'll put mine beside it. I wouldn't mind putting down my check in the least. As long as it wasn't presented. Do you mind explaining that remark, Ed? I couldn't write a check for ten pounds, let alone a thousand. What do you mean? <laughs> you slipped up, Mrs. Bear. You should have checked up at Somerset House like I did. Your Albert did everything nice and simple. I shan't cut up so well when I go. Come on, out with it. What did Monty leave you? Not a sausage. It all went to that sister Dora in Kingston, Jamaica. 
All I got was this house and that shack on the beach, remember? Lovely on a warm day. Of course, money gave me a check occasionally, but... Uh, I spent my stocking catching you. <laughs> well, Mrs. Bear, I must say, you certainly can take it. Well, it's either laugh or cry, Ed. I was never one for tears. I know why you've been making up to Charlotte Young. She's a plumper bird than I am. But I'm not having it, Ed. You may not be much of a catch, but... So help me, I love you. We didn't expect that, did we? You're not seeing that woman again. Oh, don't be silly, Fred. I'm bound to see her again in a place this time. Well, there's the bungalow. We can go there. Give her a chance to vamoose out of the place. And leave Emmy? We'll take Emmy with us. You have the car around here by five. I'll get her to pack. I can't be ready by five. No arguments, Ed. We're doing as I say, and we're staying away until she's gone. And don't go phoning her, Ed. Make it a clean break. Emmy! Emmy! This one's dead easy, Monty. Oh, Emmy, for goodness sake, stop snivelling. I will not be crossed. You're coming, and that's all there is to it. Rita! Rita! <laughs> Shut up, Emmy! What? Just going out to get a paper. All right, well, don't be long. Now, buck up, Emmy. You ought to be pleased going away for a nice holiday like this. I can't sleep in a strange bed. Well, how do you know if you've never been in one? I don't like the sea. Well, you don't have to drink it. It's not safe to leave the house. Burglar. Now, look. Mr. Bear will ring the police and tell them we're going away. They'll put a policeman outside. Now, nobody can get past a policeman. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Uh, Mr. Edward Bear, there. Who? Speak up, please. I can't hear you very well. Mr. Edward Bear, it's Mr. Mortimer's office. Oh, he's not here. He just went out for a minute. Oh, well, we tell the phone as soon as he comes in, please. All right. Goodbye. Now then, Emmy, let's get a move on. Uh, when Madam took me to Canterbury, I was sick all over the car. Well, you're older and wiser now, and your stomach's a lot stronger. It's all such a rush. I've made up my mind, Emmy, so it's no use you going on nattering. Cars at the door. Oh, what's the matter with Emmy? Oh, she's got some silly idea. She doesn't want to come. Well, before I go, she doesn't want to come. Let her stay. She's coming. You are pig-headed, Frieda. I always knew that about you. Now, ready, Emmy? You haven't given Mr. Bear his message. Oh, no, I forgot. Mr. Mortimer phoned. He wants to see you. What about? Oh, I don't know. Some mumbling clerk with a cold got through. I said you'd ring him back later. Oh, forget it. No, 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 no. You better do it. It might be important. Now, Emmy, stop looking like a wet week. Pick up your bag and come on. Birds will fret their poor little hearts out. <sighs> Audio 68. Mr. Mortimer there. Mr. Bear. Well, will you tell him it's uh, very inconvenient, but I'll be there? Yes, without fail. Right. Oh, she's a stubborn. Here, what are you taking your coat off for? We're not going. What? I've got to see Philip Mortimer. When? Tonight, nine o'clock. Well, what does he want all of a sudden? I don't know. He said it was urgent. He said he'd had a letter from Mrs. Mackintosh. That's Monty's sister, Dora. I shall have to wait and see him. You'd better get Emmy out of the car. Get Emmy out of the car? If you knew what I went through getting her into it. Well, she can't sit out there till after nine o'clock. That's a sin. Well, I'm sitting anywhere till after nine o'clock. We're off. Well, without me? You catch the 10 5, I'll meet you at the station. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll phone Philip and put him off. No, Ed. Better wait here and get it cleared up, whatever it is. I don't want you running backwards and forwards holding Miss Young's hand. That's why we're going away, to stop all that. All right, I won't argue, Mrs. Bear. I'll see you tonight. Right. Well, what about the shrouds? Oh, leave them. They suit the place. 
Mind well, how you go, Mrs. Bear. Gently does it. Mind how you go, Mrs. Bear. Gently does it. The rest's easy. It's a pushover money. Mrs. Bear? Mrs. Bear? Left your bag in the car again. Where's Mrs. Bear? She's all right now. Come in here first. Where is she? Well, we had a terrible row just after you left this morning. Well, what happened? You sounded desperate on the telephone. She's hysterical, blind hysterical. It's good to have a friend to call on, Charlotte. I got such a lot on my mind. Do sit down. I've uh, had money on my mind lately, too. D do sit down. I've got to unload to someone. Been feeling apprehensive all day. How, Edward? I've had a sort of premonition. Of what? Someone's going to die. Where's Mrs. Bear? Oh, she's all right. I'm the one you've got to worry about. Do sit down. See, I've got, I've got to talk to someone. Or bust. Someone who won't talk about it afterwards. Surely you can trust me, Edward. Well, uh, where shall I begin? It's always best to start at the beginning. Yes, well, it was the first time I ever came to this house. It wasn't long before I moved in for good, though. So I gave her value for money. I'm Made her laugh. Taught her to appreciate fine old brandy. Gave her something to live for. Me and the drink. Still, it uh, caught up with her in the end. Money hadn't got drunk and misled me. I. When did she mislead you? It was that last day. She kept talking about a will and Dora. I thought she was going to bring her sister back into the picture, but instead she was going to cut her out altogether. If Molly had made herself clear, she'd be alive today. Edward, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> of course I know what I'm saying. I'm saying that I've killed your sister, Dora. Uh. This window. See this catch? Molly had a phobia about burglars, had this comic lock fitted. She taught me how to use it, and I had to teach Frida. But you clicked that latch open, went straight through the first time. Where do I powder my nose, you said? Second on the right, I said, and you turned to the left where it is. You cheapened yourself by pretending to fall in love with me. Well, I know who I appeal to and who I don't. Frida because she's my class, and Molly because she was old and lonely. What did you come here for? What good do you think it would do? I wasn't satisfied with the result of the inquest. I've come here to put you where you can't harm anyone else. <laughs> Who do you think would believe you? Anybody would laugh in your face you're not worth bothering about. Get back to Jamaica, wherever you came from. What are you listening for? Mrs. Bear. 
Where is Mrs. Bear? Have you killed her, too? Find her. Mrs. Bear! Search the house! Dig up the cellars! <laughs> she's gone! She's left! You'll never see her again! Where is she? What have you done with her? Get out of my way, or I'll call the police! <gasps> Tell them, please. Tell them there's a killer on top of Sunset. Tell them to come and get me. I'll have a drink while I'm waiting. Go on, what are you waiting for? It's not like you, Edward. Just calmly telling me to go. There's something else at the back of that black mind of yours, and I'm going to stay here till I find out what it is. Get out of this house! No. Get out of this house. No. All the time I'm here, I'm safe. You can't afford another dead body in your drawing room, Edward. All right, Dora, you're asking for the fireworks, and here they come. You come one step nearer, and I'll scream this place down. Yes, but only once. You should study human nature. A chap hears a scream, listens, doesn't near another, and he walks on again. Take care, Edward. I'm much tougher than I look. If you're tougher than you look, why are you so frightened of me? It's all right. I was only going to finish my drink. <laughs> That's why I was just a sat for the last time. Go on, I'll give you one more chance. Clear out while it's still your word against mine. You can't frighten me, Edward. The game's up. I phoned Philip Mortimer. I could have saved you the trouble. He's always in Canterbury on a Friday. I expect you left a message. It'll be a sweet thought when he finds your body where I intend to dump it. It's not normal to have as much confidence as you have. I wonder what you'd be like without it. Go on, get out, run! I'm not going to run because you want me to. And I'm not going to die because you want me to. Get out! I've been to Romford, Edward. And Acton. I met your schoolmaster, the one you hated so. I talked to him, and now I know what an unbalanced mess you really are. Romford? Shut up. At Acton, I talked to the small boy who lived next door to you. The one you tried to kill and very nearly did. I didn't try to kill him. That boy's grown up now, and I know what really happened. What a pity this didn't come out at the inquest. Shut up, I won't listen. Oh, yes, you will. I'm going to show you to yourself as you really are. Drag out your rottenness and make you look at it. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Look at you. Even if you escape the law, which is unlikely, you can never... Never escape myself. I know it all. There's not a doctor I can't beat at his own game. I've had this old psych routine for years and years and years, and there's not one official mark against me, Dora, which is one reason why I can kill you now. Well, hit me, Edward, hit me! Never mind the fingerprints on the poker, the blood on the carpet, or how you're going to carry me out without being seen. This isn't how you mean to do it, Edward. You're bluffing again, trying to make me run. Well, I'm not going to run! I'm staying here where I am! Get out! Get out! Get out! I've come across the world to see you like this, Edward. And now I know you won't go free. All right, Izzy. All right, now, you go on up to bed. You'll be better in the morning. <laughs> I'm ever so sorry, No, it was my fault, Emmy. Now, go on. I'll come up and see you in a minute. Oh. <sighs> Well, her stomach isn't any stronger. We stopped to have tea to see if it would go off, and instead she nearly passed out. You again, Miss Young. Funny sort of time to be visiting my house while I'm away. I'm not Charlotte Young. My name's Dora McIntosh. Your husband, Edward, killed my sister. Well, I've had some pretty funny welcomes in my time, but this just about takes the cake. It's true, it's true. He's a murderer. Well, he looks very well on it. Come off it, Miss Young. I know Ed's a bad boy, but he isn't as bad as all that. You must phone the police. Not from here, you don't. Oh, please let me use the telephone. I can't leave you with him. It's not safe. That's for me to decide. Now, will you kindly get out of my house? Go back, Miss Young. Now then, young Ed, I want an explanation.
What's the game, Ed? I've won. Oh, I shall always laugh when I think of it. I couldn't get her to go. I tried every way. And then she went like a lamb for you. I don't know what you're talking about. She'll go over Sunrise Hill just like a bird, down, down, down into the valley. You don't know what you're saying. My God, you never touched her car. I touched her car, all right. The hydraulic brakes snip. I cut the tube. The oil oil ran out. She's in a hurry. She couldn't stop it. Bissio, Bissio. Ed, you don't know what you've done. Oh, well. I know what I've done. I've got my money. Any questions, Mrs. Bear? I don't mind you knowing everything. After all, a wife can't be compelled to give evidence against her husband, can she? I don't want to know anymore. Mm, but I've got to make sure you don't stick, haven't I? They want you hanging around my neck now that I've got Monty's money. Listen, I killed Monty and I killed her sister. I'm a ruthless, cold-blooded killer and I did it for gain. What's the matter, Philip? Been an accident? Something that was thought to be an accident, Edward. But it was murder. I'm going to phone the police. Freda, you tell him. How long have they been here, Freda? Long enough. Mr. Mortimer stopped me in the drive. I'm dreaming. You'll wake up in prison, Edward. Broadmoor, if you're lucky. Broadmoor? Money. Money. Money, tell me what to do. I didn't mean it, Money. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Pull yourself together, Ed. Mr. Mortimer, get him a drink. Ed. Ed. Brain's still working, Frida. Thanks. Money, I've done it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bear. The only time in my life my heart ruled my head. <laughs> 